Sorry to step out for a minute, but um, let's get back to it. So, um, I think I'll do these last two petals the same. This yellow green marker is starting to run low on ink, but I have a new one ready to go. my flush to blend and then add my little bit of purple at the base here okay all right so um, um, I'm going to change my colors a little bit as I go outwardly. As you can see from this photo, the very inner colors are more of this limey green, and then they kind of fade into this, uh, which reminds me of um, Stampin' Up! Sage Shadow, and then this very pale kind of aqua. So I'm going to try and um, lighten up my color and put more blues in it as I go outward. Um, so I will still, this time I'm going to start with emerald green, which has sort of a little bluey tint to it, which seems like almost a little bit of a darker shade than this fluorescent green. So I'm going to put that down in the base, then I'll come back in with a fluorescent and soften that out. And then I'm going to use the pale green and bring the color up. I'm not going to use, I'll use a little bit of the uh, yellow green just to kind of um, tie the two together. Um, and the outer leaves don't have so much of that purple, but I'm going to do just a couple more little um, purpley inside thingies. And I'm just going to use my flesh and kind of blend that together. And I'm also going to add a touch of light blue, which is more like a pale aqua. And I'm just going to add a touch of the light blue in a few random spots on this as well, just to tie the colors together so it doesn't seem like such a drastic change. And then I'm going to really blend it out with this uh, flush color. So it's just a subtle hint of color. And it won't be like you're going from a, you know, all limey green here to all of a sudden this blue. I want there to be a little bit of a transition. So you can see that, you know, my coloring I use a lot of colors and I kind of randomly grab colors. I don't typically have them all laid out in the colors that I want to use. I'm going to add a little bit of turquoise green to deepen this even more. And a touch there, which I'll blend with a flesh. All right, so I added the turquoise green. And I'm going to go over that with the emerald. Just to you know, bring it up a little bit, just so I change up the shape of the petals a little bit. I'm going to skip the fluorescent green. I'm going to hop right to the pale green to, um, and I'm pouncing this pale green on top of those other colors. So what it's doing is it's picking up, the little brush is picking up a little bit of those colors. And it's on there, but I'm going to hold on to it. Um, I'm going to 
come up here with a little bit of the aqua, do it in the center. I'm going to use my flesh, which has a little bit of remnants of other colors on it, just to kind of blend it all together. Try to make it realistic looking. And see, that's a lot different looking from these, so I think I will still add just a touch of this yellow green, which ties it to the colors of the other petals, but it helps me to do a transition y thing. You're picking up what I'm putting down? All right, so let's do this one. I'm starting right in actually with the turquoise. I'm going to come back in with a pale green. I'll add a little bit of the blue. I'm going to put a teeny touch of the purple down there and use my um, flesh, which kind of models and mutes that and shades that little base more. And some of the muddyish color is on my flesh marker, so it looks a little muddy. Um, but then again, I'll just use a touch of that and come back in with flesh. Kind of leave that light spot and call that good for now. So I still feel like I need to add a little more of this blue to these, um, so it helps it to tie in with the outer uh, petals. So again, just using flesh to kind of um, blend that. All right. And this time, I'm just gonna do half of it with this emerald. I'll add a touch of the turquoise in there come in with pale green. So this time I'm going to kind of work over to that little space just to change it up. Um, I still need to add a bit of this. I'm just going to, uh, you know what, I'm still going to do a little touch of the purple. I just like it for a little um, change of scenery. Right. And again down there, just because it's a darker color and it'll help to shade um, that little inner lower spot. Okay, let's spin it around. Let's start with the emerald again. Kind of do this, we'll do a U this time. Add some turquoise for depth. I'm probably going to go over all of this after with a, a gray marker to kind of denote those um, shady areas even more and, and tone down the bright, bright colors. I'm going to do a little smudge of that, a little smudge of this, go back over it with my flesh. Kind of move the color around. I like it with a little purple. So again, a little of the purple and my flesh to move that. That's good enough. I might come back to it. So sometimes as I'm doing these, I'm like, ugh, how many more petals? Good grief. But if I just focus on one at a time and not wet it, it goes by. That's why I typically prefer to color images with, you know, big images, big floral images with big petals and big spaces um, so I'm not fussing around with the tiny details quite so much. Alright, this one needs that and I definitely need this because this flesh 
when it picks up all those other colors, it gets it gets a little muddyish. And actually, well, I hate to keep doing the same thing over and over, but it kind of works. It's like you don't see so much that it's purple right there where I colored that in, but it darkens it. And then I have some nice darkness on here that if I want to add and shape my petal a little bit, I can with that little bit of color. Does anybody else color like this? All right, let's hop up here and do this. Same, same, turquoise, emerald, let's throw in a little bit of the fluorescent. Let's do the um, pale green to blend those. Let's add a smudge of the purple, blend it into the other colors which kind of darken them and mutes them. That looks kind of ugly actually. So we'll brighten it up with the yellow green and then a touch of the blue and then we'll use the flesh again to kind of just pat that all around. Okay, we're getting there. Um, Let's do this one. So let's concentrate a lot of color there. That was turquoise. This is emerald. Let's do some pale green. Let's do our little bit of purple because it just does that cool shady thing for us. And And then add just a touch of this, but tone it down with this. Love that. And let's um, let's do this one. And let's do that. Let's angle it up a little bit. We'll do darker in the center and lighter around the outside. Haven't done that yet. See, now I'm not even looking at my, not even looking at my inspiration piece. I'm just off and running. Here we'll use this. See that turquoise in the center isn't blending out that well. And let's smudge it up. Add a little of this there, a little there and there. Some purple. Let's bring some down. Bring that around. Yeah, it's okay. All right. Um, to grab the purple. You know, Linda Goron, you had asked me about, you know, doing coloring videos and I have made some and they're on my my uh, Plain Jane YouTube uh, channel. But I, you know, first of all, most of the time I just come in here and sit down to play without thinking about anything other than what I'm going to work on. I don't think about, oh, I should make a video. Um, but um, then I think, well, seems like this would be boring to watch. You know, it just goes on and on. Oh, look, I'm coloring like 25 petals and they all look alike. So how interesting is that? To me, it doesn't seem like it would be very interesting.
See, I'm just barely using the tip of this nice little brush to uh, put that color in that, that little base. Um, I've, I've pretty much determined that zigs are my absolute favorite for coloring with uh, watercoloring and coloring. Yeah, watercolor coloring with because um, I love the little brushy tips. I did order, like last year I think it was, I did order some of the Arteza um, markers that are very similar to this. And um, I tried a few of them out and just didn't like how they moved. It just I'm just so accustomed to my zigs and how flexible the little brushes are. And um, I just didn't like, I just didn't like the Arteza, so I sent them back. I know a lot of you get amazing results with those. So look, that kind of made it gray. But I don't mind that, that's fine. I'll just come in and give it a little smooch of this. See? And then pat that up and down. So this will end up not looking anything like the um, inspiration, but that's okay. It's just kind of a jumping off point. Let's do a little of the fluorescent. Let's do the light green. Let's do a little touch of the purple up here. Let's get that purpley on there. Let's brush this off. It's a little more than I have anywhere else, isn't it? So we'll just kind of disguise it with a little bit of that. That's good. So I've really been enjoying getting all these different digital um, digital designs from different creators, Alex Siberia and um, you know Ann Corbier, Corbier, Corbier Scott. I don't know how to pronounce your name, Ann. Um, and others I've had in the past, Power Poppy, uh, Luisana. Lowry has done some beautiful images that I colored a few years ago. And um, and then finding some on Etsy recently that I love. And it's just so affordable and so handy to be able to just uh, print them off and go. So it'll be interesting for those of you who are watching this. Um, you know, I'm not really paying attention. I'm kind of in a little groove. But if you've been watching it from the beginning and you're, you know, now I'm this far in, you're going, oh, now she's doing that differently. And she's, she didn't do that before. You know, I, I don't know what I'm doing or not doing. But you might notice and think, oh, now why is she doing it that way? So if you notice anything like that, um, then, you know, say so and let me know. And it'd be fun to talk about it and figure out, you know, what the deal is. I hope this is a help. I hope that you will um, get your own markers out, whichever kind and brand that you like. Um, I think to do this kind of a, this particular style of, of coloring, you should probably have either zigs or some other kind of watercolor um, base, watercolor based markers. Um, you know, obviously you wouldn't do this in this manner with Copics. Um, 
and I have to say I have distress markers, Tim Holtz Ranger distress markers, but I they don't have the nice flexible tip, which is like a paintbrush, like these do, and so I, I, I don't use those very often. Once in a while I'll pull one for a color, but that's about it. Or I'll scribble a little bit out onto my craft mat so I can pick it up with even one of these to use that color that shade but you know I just never really mastered the the distress markers for coloring well what do you think so far guys do you like it do you think that I used enough of my yellow green that's mainly in the center to bring it out into the outer petals that it's still cohesive do you think I've used too much of the purple I'm not even paying attention to be sure that I'm still under my camera which is mounted on a mount above me so when I review this um, I'll have to see what the deal is oh oh the flush Flesh and light gray, they are just the bomb for your blending. They add such a subtle little bit of color and they pick up the other colors and then they all kind of mush and mash together and then create, you know, a unique little color palette like this right here. You know, it's got almost little brown tones in it. How cool is that? Look, I only have three petals left. Yay! Um, okay, again with the turquoise and the little shady parts. I'm going to go over that with emerald. See if that deepens it at all. Smush it up with the pale green. And a smudge of this. We'll smear the blue. A little touch of the purple here and there. And get that flesh doing our blending for us. So after I color this, I'll show you one that I colored earlier today that I uh, posted in both of our groups. Um, and then I'll show you what I was thinking of doing with it. And you tell me if you think that's a good idea. Two more. Yay. Look at me being even more like sloppy. Dip, dip. One more. Pale. A little smudge of this. A little smudge of that. A little dab of my purple. There and there again. hope it doesn't all look the same that's the only thing all right so see I got this nice color on here all right so I had said that I was gonna might I might do a little gray in the depths and I am gonna cut this out so I'm testing my color do I think this is dark enough to just Yes, it is. You see, this is just kind of deepening those little shady, shadowy parts. A little bit of gray. Elena Cazares teaches us to use um, gray and purple as um, underpainting when you're using Copics.
I might have used a darker gray for this. And you, you really can hardly see the gray. And this gray is also one of my other favorite colors for just blending in the exact same way that I used my um, flesh. And look, there's not much color in that. This one's wearing out, but I have another one ready and waiting. All right, so this one's finished. I think it looks pretty good. Um, this is one that I colored earlier today. Look how similar they are. This is with the zigs and no water. This is with, I colored this with colored pencils using those big, thick, chunky pencils that have multiple colors in them. Um, and I used four or five different ones to do this. So I colored this with colored pencils. And so what I was thinking is, this is another one of Anne's images, as this is. Um, trimming this down to make a slimline card leave this all black and white and then just mount this up off the page a little bit maybe offset a little bit so you can see the drawn petals below and just have that be the card so let's play with it hang on a sec while i trim this piece down i'm leaving a little bit of a narrow white border because I love white borders or black borders. I like to frame things. Okay, so let me grab a piece of white cardstock. So this is basically that size. So I'm just going to fold this over. I'm just guesstimating uh, of the size that I want. This gives me room for a border all the way around. So I'm gonna trim this. All right, so here's my slimline base. And then would I just do this, you see? And then just place this here. Now see, that looks a little boring. So what would I do to, to tie them together? This is how I would be um, trying to figure out how to create my card. So here's a piece of this beautiful kind of limey, olivey, cardstock. So maybe what I would do is make a layer of this and then this, do you see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of playing with it. That would be my green border that would tie this in. I actually like this one better. I don't want to make you wait while I cut it, but in the meantime I will, I will do this. Let's quickly attach this to this. Um, we'll make it a little bit wider than the other border. I don't like the borders to be exactly the same size. And again, I haven't measured anything. I'm just totally eyeballing everything. I'm sure I'm not the only one. Whoops. And this. Okay. So there we go. All right. It's not quite a perfect fit. It's uh, wider on the sides than the top and bottom. So what I would probably do is just move this over to make it all an even uh, spacing and then just trim a little bit off here. But I'm not going to do that right now. So... So here's another thought. If I put, if I lift this up with foam tape, which might as well put some on the back. Okay, 
okay, but I won't take the sticky off yet. All right, so say I do it like that. Would you guys add anything more? Like what I'm thinking is should I take, say, a pale lavender, uh, maybe even a Copic, which is in this succulent, and just kind of outline maybe this or um, color in a little bit so that it it's not just this sitting by itself. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Um, but I am going to end the video because I need to fussy cut, th cut this one out. I'm going to use this one on the card and then I'll decide whether I'm going to use gray to kind of, um, you know, bring this out a little bit, but not to, to um, compete with this um, or lavender or something. But I will stop the video. I'll finish my card and then I will post my finished card. So I'm so glad you're here with me, that you stuck with me this long, and I hope it's a helpful video. Thanks.